So I'm going to show you how to wire up some LEDs. I've got a bunch of these uh, already wired up and I almost forgot um, to do this video, but basically I've got all the LEDs attached and uh, I've got a couple different size wires that I use. Um, and you wire from the negative to the positive. Uh, you just set it up however you want, I guess. But basically, I just take the wire, get it close to the to the uh, to the pre tin spot, just barely touch it to the wire, and that's it. And then uh, bend it around to the other side. Sometimes you got to turn the heat, turn the thing to get it exactly where you want it. You kind of position it so you can just push it into place get the solder in there and uh, the wire heats up pretty good so my thumb right there I could feel the heat it kind of almost burned my hand um, but you get used to it um, get your soldering iron clear that little sponge that I used to wipe off a little bit here and there and, uh, and my next one is a little longer wire so I do this and you know, sometimes I touch the, you don't necessarily need to touch the wire and get it hot. At least I don't think you do. Um, you know, maybe just, just a little bit like that. Oh, as you can see, the solder was still melted there. It, you can kind of see it skin over. Now what happened now is I got a bunch of solder on here and I got it hot a couple times and it kind of loses consistency. So. This is kind of, I'm not really sure how what, what you call that, but I've also got a, uh, a solder sucker here, so I'm going to retin this, this spot, because I just don't like the way it's going. It doesn't really work the best. It's not a one that has a little squeeze ball on it, but, so I'm just going to real quickly just add a little fresh solder to that one. You can see it beads up like a little mercury bead. Slide that sucker in there. There we go. Much better. And that's probably okay the way it was. I'm just kind of anal that way. Um, so, now we have got, let's see, I got another long wire here. So I'll just do one side. So sometimes what I'll do, as you notice, is that I stick the wire in there and then I hold it down uh, just a little bit with a, a little bit of down pressure with the, uh, the soldering iron. Uh, just to uh, kind of make sure it's at the bottom of the solder or the pad. And what you want is you want the solder to skin over the top of the wire so that it. Uh... Let's see if I can. You see that one? Yep, yeah, okay. Let's see if make sure my hand isn't in the way. I'm going to move the camera here. There we go. That's a little better. Now, you can see the bead is nice here, so you just get it hot, stick the wire in, hold it down a second, and it's really, if you get it going just right, and you get the, temp the, the solder at the right, or the soldering iron at the right temperature and everything, this can go pretty quick. And you gotta hold the wire in place until, until the solder skins over. Uh, or else you can just basically slide the wire right out. Plus to minus. Oh, this one goes here. Okay. Lost track here for a second. And sometimes you'll end up heating up the uh, the jacket of the wire a little bit too much, and it gets kind of melty. Um, I, I have this lead is a little long. Um, in fact, I should probably probably trim that off. You don't really need a very long strip section of wire. In fact, that one's kind of long too. Um, really, kind of the 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 width of the pad, I guess you could say, is how long you want the wire strip section to be. Um, otherwise, um, you end up with a lot of exposed wire. And you don't really necessarily want a lot of that. I don't think it really hurts anything, but if you accidentally ground, if you wire it's too long and it goes across to another pad or it, it grounds somewhere onto the heat sink maybe even, um, you know, you could have a, uh, 
have an issue there. And that one looks right. So what you know is if you have a good hot joint is if, is if the solder melts completely, you slide the wire in there, it skins over the wire, and then, it, then when you take the soldering iron away, it beads over or it covers the entire wire. And so if you tug on these, you should be able to tug on them pretty good. And there you go. And that's all wired up and ready to go. And then, of course, it goes, here's the empty positive terminal. That's where the red wire is going to come in from the driver or the lead the, from the other fixture, for, me, for my purposes. Minus goes out to the next positive. Minus goes to the positive. Minus goes to the positive. Minus goes to the positive. Blah, 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 blah. And then this one right here gets tied to the black lead. Of course, I drill the heat sinks so that you can feed the wires through the back side. And that way you're not... If you move the fixture out, you, the wire is sticking out the back. It doesn't, you know, warp back and forth and, and break that. So, and just so I can kind of cover this little procedure I do with you here with the soldering iron, what happens is you get a little bit of like buildup of solder. Like sometimes when you touch the the pads, um, it pulls some solder off and it builds up on the iron. Well, what you do is you just do this, and as you can see, I've got solder all over the floor. And then you know you want to have it have a uh, like a, a shiny tip basically um, and if it gets to uh, let's see you know if it, if it gets to uh, kind of brown and, and it starts to pull the solder off what I do is I just do this just add some solder to the iron pull it around you know I said even though it's hot and melty it it still sits there on a blob and just shake it off and then wipe and nice and shiny again so that's it so that's a whole lot of, of uh, soldering right there especially when it's 90 degrees outside so have a good night